I wasn't always passionate about O'Neill because I felt that he enjoyed being indulgent. Uh, there is a great indulgence in him. And it seemed to me that the British understatement uh, that I was used to is so simple and so extraordinarily economical that I always sort of veered towards uh, that kind of writing as the real moving writing of all time. But now that I've sort of looked at uh, James Tyrone and, and, and it is extraordinary to, to sort of pick the script up and, uh, and learn it and, and follow his strange rhythms, which are strange to me, um, and yet they become terribly, terribly one's own after a while. They uncannily become your own. You said you realized what I'd been up against as a boy. The hell you do! How could you? You've had everything. Nurses, schools, college, although you never stayed there. You've had food, clothing. Oh, I know, you had a fling at hard work with your back and hands and a bit of being homeless and penniless <laughs> in a foreign land, and I respect you for it. But it was a game <laughs> of romance and adventure to you. It was play. <laughs> so don't start your damned atheist morbidness again. I don't, I don't care to hear it. What do you know of the value of a dollar? My father, when I was 10 years old, deserted my mother and went back to Ireland to die, which he did soon enough and deserved to, and I hope he is roasting in hell. Oh no, there was no damned romance in our poverty. Twice we were evicted from that miserable hovel we called home. My mother's few sticks of furniture thrown out into the street. My mother and sisters crying, and I cried too, though I tried hard not to because I was the man of the family. At 10 years old, oh, there was no, no more school for me. I worked 12 hours a day in a machine shop learning how to make files, a dirty barn of a place where rain dripped through the roof, where you roasted in summer and there was no stove in the winter, and your hands got numb with cold, and the only light came through two small filthy windows and on gray days, I had to sit bent over with my eyes almost touching the files in order to see. And you talk about work. You know what I got for that? 50 cents a week. It's the truth. 50 cents a week. And my poor mother sc scrubbed and washed for the Yanks by day. My older sister sewed. My younger ones stayed at home to keep the house. Uh, we never had clothes enough to wear nor enough food to eat. Well, I remember one Thanksgiving, um, maybe it was Christmas, when some Yank in whose house my mother had been scrubbing gave her a dollar extra for a present. And on the way home, she spent it all on food. I, I can remember her hugging and kissing us and saying with tears of joy running down her tired face, glory be to God, for once in our lives, We'll have enough for each of us. A fine, brave, sweet woman. There's never been a finer, nor a brave, braver. Her one fear was that she'd get old and sick and die in a poor house. It was in those days I learned to be a miser. A dollar was worth so much then. And when you've learned a lesson, it's hard to unlearn it. Whose play is it? 